So it's your time. It's your time. So when we talk about change, we're sorry because this generation loves change. They are in change. They want change. They thrive for change. This is where they are, and this is what they want. How many of us have heard a few negative things about millennials? Anybody? You can wave your cards up right now. Anybody? Yeah, right in the back. Got us. Come on in. We've heard negative things about them, but millennials, let me tell you something. We've said negative things about baby boomers. We've heard negative things about Gen X. It's just what we all do because you are this. So, yeah, this is you. You're diverse. You're happy. With all the things that are going on, you're still happy. It's amazing. You're optimistic. Yeah, so remember the picture of Gen X? So all of a sudden, right off the bat, we have a huge difference. We have a huge difference in personality and style. So we have a generation that's very enthusiastic and very motivated. When they were little, we told them they were special. And, and I think about this all the time because I don't know about you, baby boomers, I don't know, maybe Gen X even, but I'm Italian. My dad, Mike. I can hear this as if it was yesterday. I would say something and my dad, Mike, would say, what? You think you're special? Today, my grandchildren would say, yes, Grandpa, we're special. You see, when you were born, millennials, we had watched Oprah. She opened our minds. Oprah was the big, I think she was the differentiator that made us all begin to get a conscience, right? So when you were born, we bought leather strollers. And when you were a baby, honest, your mom and dad tucked you in and we said, you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. And I know that Veritas table, you believe them. Yeah, yeah, they believed them. So we have a generation that has been empowered. And we've done this. So we have to now see, okay, this is what happens when we empower people. They believe you. So we have one of the most optimistic generations out there. This is a generation who believes that tomorrow baby boomers will be better than today. And they believe that they will be a part of that. And as they're aging, we are seeing a division. So when we're talking to people in their 30s, they're getting like Gen X, except for the personality. They're getting more like Gen X. They're buying homes. They're moving into the suburbs. They're thinking about their future. And when we're in our 20s and we're still single, we are the hipsters that are in all the cool commercials that everybody wants to look like. I mean, really, everybody in those commercials is so good looking, right? They're in their 20s. Just realize that they're in their 20s. So we now have two divisions. So when we talk about generations, we have to really begin to look at the individual because each person really is special. So when we clump them together, when we make generalizations, you're losing. You're losing the point because each one is unique. Each one is different. And each one was raised differently. So we have to begin to look at this generation as individuals because they are special. Because they're buying homes right now. It's interesting. I speak to the home builders all the time, and they're really excited because this generation is now in their 30s doing what many people did in their 20s. So it's coming. It's just coming a little bit late. So who are they? They're enthusiastic, they're bright, they're talented. They are community-oriented, and they are dedicated to causes. They are dedicated to causes. So when we talk about culture, when we talk about helping people, this turns them on. This gets them excited because this is where they want to be. They want to change the world, and they want to make the world a better place. They're young. They will mature. But let's hope that we don't kill that spirit. Let's hope that they take that spirit with them through the decades when they hit their 50s, that they still have the belief that they want to make this world a better place, okay? They are adaptable and they crave change. They are great multitaskers. They believe in work-life integration. And as I started, they are very purpose-driven. Now, in that fold, you will find some that are more and some that are less. So we have to realize that we are looking for the best and the we are looking for the best in the price. So how are you interviewing? How are you bringing them into the fold? What questions are you asking? And are you looking for that enthusiasm? Are you looking for the right keys when we are hiring, right? Because here's what they want. They want, as we grow cultures, we want our cultures to be like this. They really want leadership skill building. They want to learn how to be a leader, which means that they're going to fail at things. And as they fail, we have to be there to help them, to pick them up. How many failures have we gone through? Gosh, sometimes I think back to when I first started speaking, and I want to give those first clients their money back. Well, for a minute I do, and then I say forget that. But you know what? 
if you look back at where you started and where you are today, you have grown. Every one of you has evolved. You've gotten grounded. You understand where you are. They're in their 20s, their early 30s. They will be grounded as they go through the experiences of life. But they want those experiences. They want transparency. They want to be able to talk to you. You're my director. You're the boss. You're the CEO of this company. I want to have a relationship with you besides just, my, just the person that is above me or my director. They want transparency. They want you to be the same person at work that you are when they meet you in the grocery store. They don't want two different personalities, so they want to have this honesty. They want to have this transparency. Yeah. They want to have access to you. They don't want those doors closed. They want to be able to talk and grow, and they want to hear their voice being spoken. So when they are in a group, when they are in a team, they have a voice. They, we want to hear them. We want to give them access to the table, right? And they want to know their career path, which is really interesting. Because they want to know where you see them in the organization. People want their career paths. So as we talk about what the millennials want, it's amazing to me that what they want is what our cultures are going to. Open communication, which I'll talk about in a minute. Professional development, right? They want fairness. They want humor. They want engagement. Who doesn't want that? I want that. You want that. So we did well, parents in raising this generation and bringing them into the world because they want things that we never had the courage to ask for. So will we have to train them? Will we have to teach them new things? We sure will because right now, communication is the biggest challenge that we have in organizations. It's the biggest challenge. How are we going to communicate? I'm going to be speaking tomorrow. I'm going to Canada to speak to a university in Canada. College students do not open email. How, are they, how is the university going to connect with the new students that they're bringing in? They don't know because they don't read email anymore. So what we have to begin to do is find a common ground of communication. And we have to realize that we all are different because how many remember that first computer at work? Who here remembers? Put your cards up so I can see what generation. Who remembers? Okay, so we've got Gen X remembering, right? Right? Remember when that first computer came in? Did you have training on it? Yeah, some of us did. We had training, screen training. And remember when the screen went black and we panicked and we called some guy and he came in? Remember he had tape on his, on his glasses and he did something magic to the computer, remember? We, really, now we know he just rebooted, right? But we were so worried because we needed the training. Well, today they need training on something called the telephone. We need to really begin to look at how we want our cultures developed, and we have to put new training in. And we have to train millennials on how to answer the phone, on how to communicate, on how to have the relationships that we are looking for in our organization. Because here's what I know. You're going to change. We will become more like them than they like us. We're doing it already. How many of you are becoming more and more like a millennial with your technology, right? We're becoming more and more. But we cannot lose. Remember, I started with the traditions that got us here. We can't lose the traditions. We can't lose the important tools. We have to remember that we have to continually be training and talking about what got us here and what we need. So I believe it's called evolution, not revolution. We're not going to get rid of everything we've done. We are going to look at what got us here. What are the key components that got our organizations here? Why are you here today? What did you do right? 